Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to this Desktop and Cloud Masterclass. And um, we will be starting the webinar now, right now, in fact. So welcome wherever you're from today. Um, this class was originally scheduled for two weeks ago, but due to you know, unforeseen circumstances, we chose to actually move it forward two weeks. So really sorry we had to do that. Hopefully, um, you got to go on either the EMEA Masterclass or you're here today. Um, that is great. This session is also going to be recorded. So if you don't um, get to listen to the end of this masterclass today, you'll get the recording in an email later on, so a link to the YouTube video. You'll also be getting the slide deck today. So although Paul, my, my, my co-host today, is going to be able, give, able to give you a load of links for reference material in the Q&A section, so he'll be going into the chat window and putting some links in there for you. Bear in mind also you'll be getting this slide deck later, so if you're furiously writing notes, don't worry about that. We'll be sending this to you as we go through. So my name's Lee Bushen and uh, I've been a, a, a techie at Citrix for around 10 years now and uh, we've been running these master classes for about half of that amount of time. Um, I'm here joined today by Paul Haywood who's uh, our newest member of our team. He's been with us for about nine months is it Paul? Yeah about, yeah, about, about nine, nine months. months. That yeah. about right. And uh, Paul covers the cloud technologies within our cloud. Um, as you can see we are um, talking to you today from our brand new flagship offices up in London, in Paddington. Unfortunately, when they made these offices, they make them look really good. Unfortunately, the rooms are still echoey. They still think that glass chambers are the best, uh, the best meeting rooms to have. But it looks nice. It looks nice. Well, you know, so hopefully we haven't got too much echo on our voice today. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys will be okay. So welcome. So what's the agenda for today? Well, we're going to cover a lot of stuff today. We're, we're tracking at the moment at around an hour and three quarters to complete all of this content. We've got so much stuff to show you. We've got so many demos. Really do hope you can stay on for the, 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 the entirety of the class. So we're going to start with introduction. You know, where are we at the moment? Do a little level set. We did a part one masterclass a couple of months ago. This wasn't the one we ran back in December which was similar to the one that we're doing today on the Zen App and Zen Desktop Service. This was a general overview. We'll talk about what was involved in that overview in a few seconds. Then what we're going to do is talk about the, the, the part of Citrix Cloud that we're going to be majoring on today, which is the Zen App and Zen Desktop Service. We'll, we'll talk about you know, where are your servers located, where are all these services sitting in our infrastructure around the world, where do the bits that you are looking after sit as well. Um, you know, how secure is this? How, how are we doing in the market in terms of our, you know, user adoption and rollouts of, of new clouds? We'll also, during this section, go through and do a full install of a resource location. So a resource location is where all of your end user facing um, components of the, the system sit, whether that's in the cloud or, or on your premises. We're going to do a full install of that for you so you can see exactly how easy it is to get up and running with Citrix Cloud. What we're then going to do is talk about some of the access scenarios. So is your user inside the firewall? Are they outside roaming around? Are they at home? Are they in a you know, internet cafe? Whatever. How do we cope with those different scenarios? Um, who looks after what? So which parts are our responsibility at Citrix? And which bits are your responsibility? We'll go through all of that. And also, what about high availability? Obviously, you want to make sure this system is up um, constantly. So who looks after high availability? And how does that that message change and how does that methodology change when you move from being on-premise to being in, in a cloud infrastructure. Then we're, what we're going to do is, is take a look at, you know, maybe you're a new customer and you haven't got any Citrix in your environment at the moment, but maybe you have. Maybe you've got existing systems that are in place. Maybe you have an old Zenap 6.5 system. Um, maybe you've got a Zenap 7 system, but it's just an on-premise version. How can you move across the cloud at your own pace We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll also talk about some of the uh, challenges around your applications. Where do the applications sit? Where do your actual active directory sit as well? You know, obviously we want authentication and authorization into all of these systems. And how does Active Directory play in in the overall cloud architecture? Towards the end, we'll be talking about some of the lighter versions of the Zen App and Zen Desktop service that we've released fairly recently, I suppose it's nearly six months now, isn't it? Yep. Um, the Zen App Essentials and Zen Desktop Essentials. We'll be having an interview with Alex Balkenquall, who's going to be coming on to talk to us, and also take your questions as well. So he'll be here to take your questions, and uh, you know, you put them on the question window later. And uh, yeah, you know, 
he's here to answer all the hard questions that we haven't answered throughout this webinar. Of course, right at the end, a masterclass wouldn't be a masterclass without a competition. And you'll be able to win a Google Home. Okay, we'll have a little question. You'll go into the Q&A panel. First answer, we'll win a Google Home. So that should be cool. I'm hoping, hoping that's going to be uh, very, very useful for you guys. So another aspect of these masterclasses is that we like to keep them very interactive wherever possible. So it is me and Paul talking, generally speaking. We'll be interviewing Alex later. But of course, you guys are going to have lots and lots of questions out there. So we've got some real experts lined out in the background to answer all of your cloud questions about Citrix Cloud generically or maybe about the Zen App and Zen Desktop specifically. We've got, as usual, life wouldn't be the same without Mike Aldridge being on the back. Um, he's from our team. As I mentioned, Alex Balkan call is coming in. Um, we're going to be interviewing him later. But we've also got Joel Stocker here. Joel um, is someone that you might know from some of the older masterclasses. And Harsh Gupta, as you can see there, Harsh with a great picture of, uh, of his baby, his recent addition to his family on his back there. So uh, yeah, use the Q&A window. Those guys are there to answer your questions. Don't, don't hold back. You know, those guys are there for you today. Now, Paul, you did a part one masterclass back in June, didn't you? Maybe yep. you could tell us a little bit about what you covered and how it relates to this masterclass we're about to run now. Yeah, thanks, Lee. So, um, yeah, back in June, I think it was June the 22nd, actually, um, I ran the first Citrix Cloud Masterclass, okay? And you're thinking, well, what's the big deal? Well, Lee has always traditionally run um, Apps and Desktops Masterclass. We have Jason Paul and Mike Aldridge in our team who typically run the net, uh, the net scaler or networking masterclasses, and Chris Friend uh, typically runs the mobility masterclasses. Yeah, yeah. So really, it was a new track dedicated and focused on cloud and specifically Citrix Cloud, right? So the idea of that masterclass being part one was an introduction, okay? It was what is, you know, Citrix Cloud, positioning it, walking through all of the different services that we have available and having each service owner come on and describe and explain what those services are and how they relate to you. Just for 15 well. minutes each, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So you can um, go to that link at the bottom there. I'll pop that into the, uh, into the chat window in a moment so you don't have to remember it. And you could just fast forward it, you know, to the bit that's relevant to you if you want and just hone in on that specific service. But the idea is, is that, as I say, it was part one and it was more of a general overview um, and then just touching upon each service um, uh, in, in a little bit more detail. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's brilliant. So, yeah. So, part one isn't a prerequisite for part two. If you missed part one, yeah, there's absolutely. a link down there. Um, also, Paul will put that into the chat window in a minute just so that you've got that to refer back to. It's, it's up on, on YouTube. Um, if you missed it, you just missed the general overview. Um, this is specifically going to be de delving deeper into, into the main areas today, which are virtual apps and VDI. So, these two um, circles here on our Citrix Cloud. So Citrix Cloud is the overarching technology behind this. We have a whole number of services in here. Those services, really we're talking about the control planes primarily, are in Citrix Cloud. Um, we also have the ability to interact and um, host other parts of those services in any cloud. Okay, So just because we're controlling the infrastructure for you doesn't mean to say we don't give you massive amount of flexibility to put your virtual desktops and your virtual apps wherever you please. Okay, Anyone else's cloud on site under you know, all of the major hypervisors. Okay, so we're talking specifically Zen App and Zen Desktop here now. And I just want to give you an example of uh, where your servers are located in this environment. So where do they sit when you move to Citrus Cloud? So I'm going to do a little whiteboard exercise for you and just give you a, a rough overview of the Zen App and Zen Desktop architecture today. So anyone that's, that's using the FMA, the Flexcast Management Architecture, will know that the heart of the system is something called a delivery controller. And this delivery controller sits on your premise and it brokers all of the connections from your users through to the resources they're gaining access to, the virtual desktops, the apps, you know, when they're logging in and consuming resources there. Um, that delivery controller comes with a license server, which checks licenses in and out, depending on what licensing scheme you're on. 
Um, there's an Active Directory in there, which is used for authentication and authorization, and we associate our users to applications using Active Directory and the groups within there. We also have a back-end database that we hold all of our configuration information in there too. The, the administrative side of things is uh, the setup is done via a tool called Citrix Studio, which is a, a, a .NET, uh, .NET application, it's a, no, MMC-based application uh, that sits on, on your Windows server on-premise and you log into that and create all of your various objects and policies in the Zen desktop system. Citrix Director is your day-to-day -day administration tool and monitoring tool, so you can go in there and see how the system's doing, you can clear sessions down, you can mirror users, all that sort of thing. The users themselves will typically interact with the overall system using something called Storefront, which is their pane of glass they go to within a web browser or within Citrix Receiver um, to actually gain access to those resources. So all of their icons get housed in that single pane of glass. They click on them and stuff happens. Okay. Now, also, when our users are being brokered to their virtual desktops or their virtual apps, where they're actually going down to is this thing here, a VDA, the Virtual Delivery Agent. This is a piece of software that's installed on your Windows box or your Linux box, depending on what you're, you're deploying it's down to your users. And that VDA is what the user is talking to on a, on a daily basis. Okay? You have a Netscaler sitting in here if you want remote access smart card authentication all that kind of thing and obviously you've got a number of services internally in your organization that people are accessing you've got data maybe file shares you know departmental file shares that sort of thing home directories you've got maybe databases maybe web server applications anything out here all of this stuff is on premise so how does this change when you move to the cloud well imagine for a second now we've got on premise We've now got Citrix Cloud. Citrix Cloud's an App and Zen desktop service is hosted in Microsoft Azure. So all of the infrastructure that we look after and manage is all based in, in, in Azure exclusively. So when you set up and you, you buy the Zen App and Zen desktop service, what you get is this. Effectively, your delivery controller gets moved across into the cloud. So we create a delivery controller for you. We don't take your existing delivery controller. We're, we're populating, we're, we're building one for you in the cloud. Okay. Of course, the database that's associated with that is also a service that we provide within the cloud. The same with the licensing server. Okay, so the licensing server is, is held and managed by us. On the management side, effectively, we just take the same management tools that you've been using on site and actually move those across to the cloud as well. So instead of the administrator going in and accessing stuff on, on your site to manage the system, they're going into Citrix Cloud and accessing the same resources the same tools. That's something I'll show you as we go through the demonstrations today. Okay. What we also do is we host Storefront in the cloud too. So here's Storefront. Uh, we actually host that across in the cloud for you as well. So when you get us an App and Zen desktop service, you'll see that you get a special URL that we give you, um, which is your, uh, your Storefront. Your Active Directory stays on-prem. Okay. So this is your uh, identity store. This is this is probably one of the most secure parts of the whole infrastructure. So that stays on premise, and we don't we don't actually uh, uh, change that model at all with Citrix Cloud. Now, an additional piece of technology that has to come into play with this new architecture is is the cloud connector. Now, what is this cloud connector? Well, you've got VDAs, so your virtual desktops are still within your your premise at this particular point. Your users might still be on-premise as well. So how are those VDAs going to communicate with this infrastructure over in the cloud? You don't want to go poking holes in your firewall or you know, having all of this stuff happen over the internet you know, in an insecure fashion. So what we do is, as part of the installation, I'll show you this in a second, we, we deploy um, a cloud connector on a Windows server for you. Um, the recommendations are that you have two. Okay, so you should always have two for redundancy. In fact, some of the, the later best practice also recommends that we have three. And we'll talk about why that is in a little while. So essentially, your user talks to your storefront, and your storefront um, will talk to the, the DDC, decide what um, applications the user has access to. It'll give them those applications. When they click on them, they'll get access in here um, straight through into, into that side of things. Okay. So, you know, once again, very similar architecture to what you'd be used, used to if you were on an existing Zen App and Zen desktop on-premise install. It's just the control plane 
is now in Citrix Cloud. Your VDAs can stay on site under your control, under your management, safe and secure. Okay. So another thing to point out in uh, in the scenarios, guess what? We've got a new European cloud region. Okay. Um, sorry, that's just Paul leaving the room there. Sorry, he hasn't uh, he hasn't died. He's, he's just gone out of the room momentarily. Um, yeah, so Citrus Cloud, typically this has been in the US, a US-based control plane. Very shortly, we're going to be releasing our European cloud region. Okay, So this, this cloud region is based within the EU, and it's for, for users who really, for maybe regulatory reasons, have to st uh, all of their data and all of their information has to stay within the European Union. So hosting it within the European Union, you will actually see a blog down the bottom there that you can have access to and you can see what we're planning here. Um, that's going to be available very soon. What isn't going to be available, just to, just to be clear here, is uh, the ability to migrate existing resources from the USA to the, Euro, to the European zone. You know Why? Well, effectively, these are two separate ZenApp and Zen desktop systems, right? So migration would be the same as migrating from one ZenApp and Zen desktop system to another one. So just bear that one in mind. But hey, you know, this is something a lot of people have been um, looking out for. Also, we're making it international in terms of our, uh, our language support as well, aren't we, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're going to be adding additional four local languages, um, which, uh, you know, is, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is, right? Because just we shouldn't always expect everyone to have uh, English as their native language. And it's quite nice no. to actually be able to use the product um, in in that so it's uh, German Spanish French French English yep they're four languages okay great so you know where does this, where does this leave us Paul in terms of global presence within Citrix Cloud yeah so we've seen some really great growth um, over the past year or so and um, and as you can see um, you know we're breaking out into that uh, EU control plane um, as Lee's just been talking about but you may not know that we also have a bunch of other services you know, in, uh, in different regions as well that's been available for quite some time. Sharefile, as you can see there, we have 10 um, storage zones. Um, we also have our management layer for Sharefile as well that's actually not on this slide here. We've got um, seven regions for Zen Mobile as well. Um, with regards to point presence, as in from a networking perspective, um, we've got eight of those as well. Um, uh, globally uh, as well going on. There's actually a few more have been added recently. Since this yeah, started. I think, yeah, Lee and I were having this debate before we came on, should we add them into this slide or not? And I think we kind of said, mm, not sure, we'll go with the eight for now, but yeah. we're pretty sure that there's a, a few additional ones that uh, are coming online. Okay, great. So I know that most of you guys are in the US, but just to point out, you know, we've got a, a real global presence here and we've, we're starting to invest a lot in this technology with our European um, control domain. So, Paul, um, you know, we've had this out in the market now for, what, you know, a year and a half, something like that. Um, you know, how, how many people are using it? How are we getting on with this? And how, how are people feeling about the, the security aspects of moving stuff out and to be controlled via the cloud? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think, you know, first of all, there's, there's no denying that our customers are absolutely looking to go, you know, with a cloud-first mentality. It's something that's ultimately unavoidable, right? Depending on the type of service, depending on the type of platform, depending on exactly what the use case and the needs and the business requirements are. And, you know, as a result of, as a result of that, you know, we're ultimately seeing some really great uptake with regards to Citrix Cloud. So we've had around about eight services come on board this year, um, affecting all kinds of different parts of the platform ultimately. Um, I think, in fact, when I did my uh, June masterclass, uh, we were just speaking about, at the time of the release of our NetScaler management and analytics service, which ultimately actually only came on board um, about two weeks after that first masterclass. So we released it around about the beginning of July, and already it's becoming a hugely um, popular um, service and product from, from Citrix Cloud. Um, additionally, just when we kind of look at some other numbers that are going on there, you know, data is, you know, is unavoidable with regards to, um, you know, the, the types of services um, users and uh, businesses are looking to get access to. And, you know, some of the numbers there, as you can see, 25 million share file users is absolutely incredible. 
And the one that I really like, you know, it's the biggest number on here, you know, 1.4 billion files managed by Sharefile. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So we're seeing some really great traction and we, you know, we're still seeing that traction and we know that based on some of the new features and services coming, that momentum is going to grow even more by the year end and hopefully we're going to see some exciting things from Summit next year. Yeah, well. definitely. I mean, one of the other things to point out here is the rate of change here is massively fast, right? You know, we're seeing things coming out all the time. Um, for Zenapp and Zen Desktop Service, the um, the release cycle is probably every around every three weeks for new technology coming in here. Um, our current releases, which are the ones <laughs> that you'll probably be more um, familiar with internally, um, you know, 7.14, 7.13, all the 7 series of Zenapp and Zen Desktop, the current release, they all feed off the cloud releases. So the stuff gets released in the cloud first, then it goes into the current release. Every couple of years we release an LTSR, a long-term service release, which we just did last last month, by the way, um, with the LTSR 715. So huge, huge amount of innovation and change. Um, lots of great features coming on all the time. And guess what? All of this stuff is actually maintained for you in the cloud don't need to change anything. You're not having to upgrade every every couple of weeks. All this stuff is done for you. We'll talk more about that as we go through though. So um, on the security side, you know, a couple of things that people sometimes hit us with is, well, how secure is this? Well, you know, how, how secure is your data center? I think you'll find that, you know, a lot of the major cloud providers that are out there actually have you know, arguably better security than most most on-premise data centers anyway. So cloud now is is not really seen as so much as, you know, your data is, is going off into somewhere public where other people get access to it. It is seen as, as pretty secure. But equally, you know, what about the stuff that you're holding in Citrix Cloud with the Zen App and Zen Desktop service and how, how much of that data do we hold? Well, really, all we need to know um, about your applications and your users is just some of the metadata about those users. So your directory is still on-premise, but we do hold information about your usernames and groups in Citrus Cloud. Of course, it's secure. You know, it's not it's not a system that other people can get access to. Um, but, you know, if you're concerned about certain bits of data in the cloud, PII data, we do hold usernames. Application names, obviously, we need to know what users have access to what applications, desktops. Also, icons, you know, who cares? You know, you've got an Adobe Acrobat icon in the cloud. Oh, no big security breach. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's not a huge amount of information held there. Uh, most of the, the sensitive stuff can remain on site if you want to. So if you remember my diagram I showed you just now, think about it, um, our directories on site there, uh, all our databases and applications are on site, our virtual desktops that our users are accessing are on site. Okay, so not a lot of stuff is going traversing this control plane. Now that's the stuff we hold about you. What about stuff in transit? Well, of course, everything that's coming out and, you know, if you're going to be authenticated to this storefront here, we need to send the password over to storefront in a secure fashion. So we absolutely have security for those passwords. Um, you know, if you're accessing the system from outside the firewall as well, we have Netscaler, which is securing the user's experience, making sure that their whole uh, virtual desktop and HDX experience is done in a secure fashion. And, you know, um, a lot of the credentials that aren't actually held in the cloud either, they do traverse the cloud, um, but they're not persisted. They're not held in the cloud in any particular way. Um, for those guys out there that are particularly security conscious, we also support um, a slightly more hybrid environment where maybe you have your storefront locally on your site. So we can do that as well. That's absolutely supported. Um, you can also use an on-premise Netscaler if you want to to gain access to these resources. So we can have a Netscaler here or we can have Netscaler out here. We'll talk about the Netscaler service in a little while. So um, just a little bit quickly about this Cloud Connector. I'm just about to install that Cloud Connector for you. So you'll see me actually do this live. Uh, just a few bits of best practice here about that Cloud Connector. So, you know, it doesn't require any specific firewall rules. It will work with, um, you know, a standard internet proxy out there. But what we do say is, you know, restrict it in the same way as you would do any other important piece of infrastructure. Don't allow, you know, RDP access, for instance. Don't install third-party applications on it. Don't make it your AD controller, right? You know, some basic standard rules in there. Make sure it's got antivirus. Make sure that you've got Windows Update on as well, okay? So, you know, just because you have an operating system running here, just treat this as you would any other Windows server. 
Um, the, the software, the connector software that's on here is managed by us. We'll talk about that as we go through again. Um, Paul, you, I think you've got a few um, links you're just going to put onto the chat window here. So if you want to know a little bit more about this, this security, uh, this connector, from a security perspective or what specification VM you need to know, that sort of thing, all that stuff is now in the chat window. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's 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 get Citrix Connector up. So hold on, Lee. Are you going to do a live demo? I'm going to do a live demo. Wait, do we have the caveat this at all. We saw Apple only a few weeks ago have a bit of fun. <laughs> I'm not doing the, any facial recognition. No, today. no facial recognition. No, okay, not at no. all. I'm just using standard passwords. I've even brought in my proper keyboard, so I'm not tapping away at a tiny laptop keyboard today. So hopefully, I won't get any passwords wrong. It has happened in master classes. <laughs> I set I set up a password at the start of a master class about about a year ago, and I typed in Citrix one two three as the password and. I went back to that demo an hour into the masterclass to see if it finished provisioning, and it hadn't. Found out I typed Citix, not Citrix. Oh. I missed out the R. Wow. So you, you watch me. You be my second pair of eyes today, Paul. So Citrix Connector. What I've got here is I've got a resource location. So this is my resource location. It's my on-premise data center. All my VMs are running on Zen server, as you can imagine is uh, normally the case for us here at Citrix. The three main pieces of infrastructure I'm concerned with here are my connector VM, which is a standard Windows 2012 server, and I've got a couple of VDAs that I'm going to be connecting into from my users' um, perspective later on. Okay, so that's, that's that's a bit that I'm connecting to. I've just RDP'd into the connector, and in order to install the connector software, what I need to do is log into Citrix Cloud. So, you know, logging into Citrix Cloud is free, right? You can create an account. It's, in itself is, is, is a free service. It's the services that run within Citrix Cloud are the, the bits you pay for, right? Yeah. Ultimately, they're the pieces that you know, run on some additional architecture, which cost money. Okay. So resource locations. What resource locations do we have in this cloud already? Well, I've got a resource location, which is another data center in Azure. Paul's also got his lab in here as well. Um, I'm going to create a new resource location, though, for this masterclass. And I'm going to call this resource location RL for resource location. And I'm going to call it on-prem. Okay. And I'm going to hit save. So what you'll see in a second is, is I've now got a, a new resource location listed in here. So what I'm doing here, if you look at where I'm actually at, I'm actually sitting on this VM here. I'm on this cloud connector and I'm just about to install the cloud connector software. I'm on-premise with my VDA sitting on the same Zen server. Okay. So, next thing I need to do is create a cloud connector. Click on that. It'll ask me to download the software. And in a few seconds' time, it'll run the install up for that. Now, if you're a brand new customer to this, you won't get as many choices as I'm going to get during this install. Because I'm, I'm a kind of a power user in here, I've got multiple um, company accounts listed, and I've got um, multiple resource locations, I've actually got a a few options that I have to do here. But for, for you, you probably won't see many of these options. First one it's going to ask me about when it logs in is what um, account associated with this I'm going to use. If you go um, into here, you'll notice I'm going to use this one, Readiness EMEA. So this is my customer account. Um, you'll just have one there. Within that, what it's now going to do is, is enumerate the resource location. So it's going to give us the ones that I've got at the back here. Maybe I'm creating a second or third connection for one of those. Um, in my case, though, I'm just going to choose this one I just, just created, RL on-prem. Hit install. Now, that's going to install the connector software. And we're going to come back to this in a few seconds when that's installed. While that's running, though, what I'm going to do is go across to the next part of this. So if you go to Citrix Cloud, if you go to um, Citrix Cloud UI and go into the Zen App and Zen Desktop service here, what you'll see is there's a download button and that download button allows you to download the VDA code that you need to put on your VDAs in order for them to be accessible um, to to the system okay so look in here there's a button across here saying download what I've done is I've already downloaded the VDA 715 VDA and I'm just going to run that up now hey Lee whilst you're doing that yeah. um, you know I've had quite a few people ask me this before that oh do I have to go you know that exact way to get the VDA download and the answer is no because many of you who will be on this call today will have a Citrix.com 
log in and you're probably very used to going to the download section yeah. and then you're used to choosing Zen App and Zen Desktop and maybe choosing whatever the specific piece of software you know from there and you know as we're talking about the VDA if you just happen to browse you know to it this, that way you know it will still work okay so you don't have yeah. to do it that and it way. doesn't need to be the latest version of the VDA as well so if you've got a VDA that you're used to and happy with in an existing environment you can use that as long as it's a version 7 VDA right I think we support all of the later versions of 7 so 7 6 upwards I believe absolutely uh, in Citrus Cloud so let's go and install it so I can create a master image and then use that master image to provision out 10 20 or 100 VMs or I can just enable connections to this file server. Choice is yours. I'll choose this option. I'm going to create this and make this a golden image. Do I want Citrix Receiver on my server? So I might do, am I looking to do a double hop? So I'm hop onto a virtual desktop and then log into some applications there. Um, that you know, the choice is up to you. You can install it manually if you want to. There's a few options here, just the same way as with on-prem. Um, personalization with App V. Uh, App disks, personal VDIS technology, I'm going to take those off. I'm not going to need them. Next thing I do is tell it what my controller address is. Hang on, Paul. My controller's in Citrix Cloud. Mm. What am I going to type in here? Well, where's the delivery controller in that case? Well, well, look, you know, in here, I'm, I'm actually installing the VDA software across on this guy, but my delivery controller's here. Normally, I type in the address of that guy, but that's not going to work. How's it going to see that over the cloud? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Paul. <laughs> See, you haven't practiced this bit. I'm making it up as I'm going along. Um, basically, what you do is you, you put the address of the cloud connector. Okay. So cloud connector, as we know, is, is, is connector dot training dot lab. Okay. And let's just hit a test connection. As you can see, there's a little click there, little tick there, which means that now that connector is up and running. Normally, we'd have multiple connectors. I'm just going to ignore that because I've only got one. Few optimizations, just the same way as you would do on site. Make sure the right firewall rules are in place for communication and registration, that sort of thing, and hit install. And probably five to ten minutes later, this is going to come back to you and the VDA is going to be fully installed. It's going to do a little reboot here and it's going to continue on. Now, just to save you waiting five or ten minutes, what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like when it's already installed. Is this, is this the Blue Peter moment? This is the Blue Peter moment. Okay. They might not know what that means in the US, okay. but you know, Blue Peter moment, they always used to build things um, out of, you know, paper paper rolls and cereal boxes and stuff, and they used to say, and here's one we prepared earlier. Yeah, so rather than waiting for the glue to dry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they would just bring it out and you didn't have to wait. Okay, so here's a VDA I prepared earlier. You can see here in computer management some of the services that are running here. These are all the VDA software, group policy engine, desktop service, CIP agent, all this kind of thing. Also, little hack for you, if you want to see what this particular VDA, who, who he's registered with, or who he's going to attempt to register with, then it's in HK, HK, HK Local Machine, Software, Citrix, and then we go down to VDA, Virtual Desktop Agent, and in there you'll see, lo and behold, connector.training.lab. So you can see there that it's already configured to talk to our, uh, our controller. Okay? So we've already done that one. Um, just to verify, we've got my, my connector up and running. We don't need to do anything in this connector anymore. Uh, this guy is, is, is now up and running. We don't need to, to manage anything from within here. So I'll close that down. Okay. So now let's just go to a, a standard local browser and actually continue the configuration from there. So what I have to do now is um, this is something that will be quite familiar to you if you come from a Zen App and Zen desktop environment. And that is Citrix Studio. So we've got Citrix Studio hosted for you in the cloud. So if you look through at our architecture diagram here, I'm an admin. I'm talking to this guy in Citrix Cloud. But it's being hosted via a web browser. You can see it. I think it's, uh, they've got an HTML5 um, uh, receiver running in here. And this is, this is what we're now talking to. Uh, if I hit refresh, you should see that connector. It, by default, goes into an initial zone. Okay. So um, you can see there, connector.training.lab has gone into our initial zone. So let's just create, um, actually we've got one already in here um, from before. So it's actually gone straight in there because we actually created that earlier. So we created a zone in here just, just using the, the normal mechanism. So create zone. Okay, we just created a zone in here and we just put the connector in there. So now we've got the connector in the zone. The next thing we need to do is let it talk to our hypervisor. So 
One of the things that this connector does is starts and stops VMs down on our hypervisor, provisions them for us with machine creation services, that sort of thing. So we need to tell Citrix Cloud about our hypervisor so that the cloud connector can actually do that, can actually affect things. So next thing we do is go into hosting, add a hypervisor just the same way as we would do in an on-premise environment. Okay. We go. So um, we're we're running on Zen server, as you know. So let's just type in the IP address of my Zen server here. It's 10.82.18.234. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, okay, hypervisor admin is is my user ID in this particular case, and my password is. You're going to read it out? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> zone name, we're going to choose resource location on-prem, which was my zone that I defined earlier. I'm going to call this connection, I don't know, um, MC on-prem. Okay, just so that we know. Masterclass on-premise <clears throat> connection. Now what's going to happen is the cloud connector is now going to talk to my hypervisor. It's going to authenticate to it and it's going to enumerate all of the resources that are running on that Zen server. It's going to look at what networks it has. It's going to look at what storage is attached to that Zen server. And it's going to give me some options for storage of VMs. I'm just going to choose the defaults here. I want the shared storage that it has. Um, I can be a bit more granular about where the, the virtual disk sits. I'm just going to put them all on this NFS, this storage here. Next thing it's going to do is, is look at the networks. Now I know that my um, networks are all an internal, so I'm going to call this Zen Server Net, and all my VMs I want on this internal network bridge on my Zen Server. This is obviously going to vary depending on what um, infrastructure you're talking to. I'm going to hit finish, and uh, there's my hypervisor connector sorted. So I've got a, a zone with my connector in it, I've got a hypervisor connector. Next thing I need to do is tell my Zen desktop system about that VDA. So let's go ahead to uh, machine catalogs. And I'm going to create a new machine catalog in here. It's going to be a server operating system, so I'm, I'm provisioning Zen app servers rather than virtual desktops. They're going to be power managed, so the, the cloud connector is going to allow me to um, start and stop these VMs. I've got a few choices here. If I was creating a golden image and I wanted to spin up 10 servers from it, I would choose this option here. And MCS is fully supported uh, within Citrus Cloud. And in, you know, even if we have a resource location in, um, in Azure or um, Amazon or somewhere else, Google, uh, maybe we can, we can do this as well. I can also use provisioning services. There are some caveats around that, Paul, you know, as, as, as you've said before. Um, basically, provisioning services needs to be on-premise. We can't actually do this um, with cloud. Cloud doesn't lend itself very well to, uh, uh, to that. And uh, in this case, though, I'm actually not going to use any provisioning. I'm just going to point it at that VDA uh, directly, okay? So another cloud service or technology. Choose a VM. Again, this is going to have to... Uh, it's going to have to actually uh, enumerate them. It's getting that straight off a hypervisor. CCVDA1 is my, my virtual desktop. I've just got to choose within Zen App and Zen Desktop uh, the machine account within Active Directory. Because this cloud has multiple directories associated with it, I've just got to choose the one I'm using, um, training.lab. As you can see, Paul's got his own domain in here. I've also got one in Azure that I'll show you later on. I'm just going to choose uh, training.lab in here. And I'm going to check for this guy. So it's um, CC, check names, and it will find VDA1 from within my Active Directory. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. So I'm just introducing the, the cloud system to here. Um, which zone do we want it to be in? Well, resource location is on-prem, so theoretically the resource location is, is that. And the VDA is 7.9 or higher. It's actually the 7.15 VDA that we installed. Uh, one of the things we introduced, actually, with the LTSR version is the ability for us to support that 7.15 VDA both on-prem and in cloud. So actually, because cloud is moving all the time and it's actually getting better on a three-weekly basis, you can still have that agility 
of Citrix Cloud, but your VDAs can still stay on 715. Yep, so okay. five years support, right? Yeah, five years support, five years extended after that. Exactly, so 10 years. So we support that that model as well. Um, it could be at some point we bring something that needs a VDA um, change that, that means you need to upgrade your VDA. But you know, we will support you on a on a slightly degraded level through those years with Citrix Cloud if you stay on that 715. I think it's also worth noting, Lee, perhaps just once you continue there. But um, if you do stay on 715, and you know, we continue to update Studio and release additional features and functionalities, you know, you do just have to bear in mind that if your VDA hasn't been upgraded, you're not going to be able to get those additional features or policies or uh, you know, things that we've added ultimately, you know, from a performance or feature set perspective. So you do have to take that into consideration as well. Sure, sure. So, right, we finished that machine catalog, hit finish. So we've now um, introduced that machine to the system. Now what we're going to do is create a delivery group, just the same way as we would do in a normal ZenApp and Zen desktop environment, um, to actually host this. So what machines are we going to allow access to through this delivery group? Well, we've only got one set of machines available at the moment that haven't already been allocated. The next box is, you know, who are we going to give access to these machines? Now, we can actually do this with Active Directory directly here, like you can do in a normal Zen App and Zen desktop environment. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to leave this radio button as the top option. Leave user management to Citrix Cloud. You'll see why in a minute. So I'll be able to use a library within Citrix Cloud to allocate my users in there. Add applications. So what it'll do is it'll take VDA1, CC VDA1, that I installed the VDA on earlier, enumerate it, find all the applications that are on there. So let's choose... Acrobat Reader, let's choose uh, Microsoft Paint, I don't know, WordPad, whatever, okay, just a few applications to show you. Um, just, to, just to show you where these applications are hosted, what I'm going to do is say on-prem, and I'm just going to change this so that when you're seeing these come up in storefront, you'll actually see where they're coming from. So these applications are on-prem. So although the control plane is actually in the cloud, this resource location is on-prem, okay, just to be really clear about that. And the applications that are running on those VTAs are on-prem. So if you look at the, the architecture diagram, this is where we are. We're down on-prem, we're on this server here, and Acrobat, WordPad, all that stuff is down here. So I'm calling it on-prem. Right. Give it a name. So this is delivery group, so let's call it DG hyphen on-prem. Okay. Display name the same. Okay, so we've done that. That's all we need to do in Studio for now. Um, what we can do is go into that library and now access or, or restrict or allow access to that um, to our individual users within the cloud. Now, one of the things that um, that happens when you install the connectors is Active Directory comes up as a, as a domain within Citrix Cloud. and You can manage and add users from that Active Directory domain. Obviously, the connector is, is the entity that's talking to that domain on behalf of Citrix Cloud. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, when I created those delivery groups, because I said I wanted desktops, it's given me a desktops option here. Um, the on-prem applications, it's also given me an application. So, if I click those two groups there, Manage subscribers, choose the correct domain. You'll probably only have one. I've got three in this case. And I'm going to just choose this for domain users. Hey, Lee, just while you're putting that in there, yeah. you've had some great feedback from Perrine uh, Crampton here. Wow, great explanation of where things are getting stored and the whole process. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. So there you go. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Any questions, just keep them coming. So we're going to manage those two subscriptions. Um, and uh, there you go, so domain users have now got access to this service. Okay. Right, so that's the first part of the configuration done. I've now got um, three domains in here, Paul's domain, um, my, my Azure domain, and the new one that I've just created. I've got three resource locations. Um, incidentally, one of the things about the resource locations, you know those connectors, you might want to check and see if they're, if they're active, right, and if Citrix Cloud can see them during a, a troubleshooting process. So you can see here, it's, it's giving me some errors because I've only got one cloud connector. It's going gonna, it's gonna to complain at me until I actually create some more cloud connectors. Um, it is up, though, so I can get rid of that message. You'll see that connector is up. 
because it's only been up for a little bit of time, it's not really got a huge amount of information. I can run a health check here, but there isn't much um, information associated with it. If I look back at um, one of my other resource locations, though, you'll actually see because they've been up for some time, they will have some information in there. So if I click down on that, okay, there's my two connections in the cloud. If I click on this button, though, look at that, Paul. Memory information, CPU information, got some network data in there, and disk space. So you can actually see, do some monitoring of those cloud connectors uh, while we're in here. Okay, so that's the initial setup done. Now, the next thing is how do users now get access to this brand new resource that I've just created in Citrus Cloud? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this. First of all, your users could be internal users. Okay, so they could be over here sitting on the same network or with network access to this VDA. All they need to do in that case is log into our cloud-based storefront and actually access those resources. So if I, if I pretend I'm an internal user now, let's go across here. Let's go to the Zenapp and Zen desktop service once more. And within here, it'll show us where that user needs to go to to get storefront access gives it a few seconds here. Um, basically, there's a URL that's in here, Paul, isn't there, that's generated based on your account. Yep. So um, if you go to access, I think it's uh, the access tab, which will, which will come up in a minute, it'll just give us the URL that I need to click on, onto to get access to this, these services. There you go, service delivery. So the cloud host is storefront. It's on. We can turn it off if you want, if you've got your own one on premise. In this case, we're just going to leave it on. There's our URL. So literally, all we need to do Get that URL there, copy that URL, paste it. We've done it, actually. Okay, and I've now got access. Now, if I try and access this system from here, it's not going to work at the moment. Why? Because I'm out here somewhere. Okay, so let's do it from a, a machine that's internal within my data center. So let's go to a browser here. Uh, oh, look, we're still using a web interface in here. We've got an old legacy system. Let's see what we can do with that legacy uh -oh. system later, Paul. But let's go to our cloud storefront. Do the same thing again. So the domain is training. And my name is Lee B, and I'm in the, the users group. OK. And this will enumerate those applications that I configured just now and uh, give me access to those because I'm in that, that domain users group. OK. Always, always slow the first time, isn't it? Or when you're watching it, it's like a watch kettle never boils, as they say. Oh, grandmother's tale isn't it so don't watch it and I don't have my singing voice unfortunately <laughs> today to put some background music in okay. here for us so there's, there's those three applications that we had so if I click on WordPad within here um, because I'm internal to the network um, and I haven't deployed any sort of security solution yet you'll still find though that WordPad from that VDA one will launch um, because I've put share file into that image as well it's actually going to ask me if i want to log into share file to get access to resources i'm going to click no at the start and in a couple of seconds time you'll see i get wordpad so wow i've just deployed an application cloud managed but on premise located okay so uh, this is great this okay. is hybrid this is hybrid cloud <laughs> for you okay now here's the problem though what happens if this user goes home what happens if the user goes home? He's outside the firewall. How can how can he get access to that VDA? Well, I'll tell you how we do it. We do it via Netscaler. So what we can do is we can host a Netscaler for you in the cloud. The user will connect to the Netscaler. Okay, so he will he will do this when they log into into the system. And then Netscaler will do all the heavy lifting. Netscaler will talk to the cloud connector, create a channel through to that VDA for that user. And he'll be in and running literally just a quick click of the box. So we go in here, go to Citrix Cloud, turn on Netscaler. Now you've got two choices here. You can use um, our cloud hosted Netscaler, and it's as simple as just clicking go or save in that case. You can actually use your own Netscaler on site if you want to as well. Why might you want to do that, Paul? Um, I think, you know, um, probably the main reason today is that if you take advantage of your um, existing Netscaler or your existing investment in, you know, the Netscaler or Netscalers you may have is about features and functionality. So um, 
the Netscale gateway that we have today in Citrix Cloud, you know, I would say it's um, it's fairly basic it, in in a sense. It will absolutely do what you need it to do, and you know, Lee will show you that in just a moment. But if you want to have some advanced features, take advantage of uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, I quite like using, for example, in my environment, Unified Gateway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just think it's a really nice touch with the customizations as well. Then that's exactly why that you know you would take advantage of an on-premise Netscaler over and above the offering that we have here. You know, the flip side to that is some customers who will be listening, or even some partners who will be on this call today. You know, they might only want a cloud solution, as in they don't want to host anything, they don't want to manage anything anymore, and if they're just looking for that basic ICA connection, you know, the Netscaler Gateway offering that we have today through Citrus Cloud will absolutely do the job. So I think it just really depends on exactly what you want. Okay, okay. So so let's let's go ahead and uh, and log into this cloud storefront. So there's there's a the storefront there, training Lee B again, hit login. You know, maybe maybe I'm sitting at home on my home PC now and I want access to that desktop. I can go in here, I can click on my WordPad. And just from a single tick box in a box, I've now got secure access. And actually, it's launching me a desktop as well. It knows that I've got a desktop associated with me. So it's launching me a full uh, Windows desktop as well. If I hadn't allocated that use that desktop within libraries, it wouldn't be giving me this. You can actually turn off the automatic run as well if you want to. Um, OK, so there we go. And there's my, my notepad or my WordPad roamed across from when I was in the office to my home PC. This is great. This is still great. This needs um, autocorrect for spelling, I think, Lee. It That's does. This it does. So um, <laughs> we'll talk about that. We've got an app for that later on. So uh, another thing we can do is we can actually log in. So say I go to our internet cafe now, and I want to gain access to resources. So here's my, my little iPad in here. So I've installed Citrix Receiver on here. I can go to WordPad from within here. Okay, and uh, now it's going to ask me to log in, so domain, it's uh, training, isn't it? Not quite sure why we've got this random window kind of bar in the middle of Lee's tablet here. Um, yeah, we're using, sure uh, yeah, it's, it's something to do with GoToMeeting. Um, password. Okay, hit log on. Well, you should see. Okay, they're holding their breath. They didn't. They didn't actually rehearse this bit, did we, Paul? No, they rehearsed this bit. <laughs> that's that's fine. It's good to do a bit of freestyling. I it think, it certainly is. Okay, see, it's disappeared. The application has disappeared off my desktop at home now, and I've now got access to it via my iPad which is awesome. This is great. So we're definitely not having an Apple moment right here, Lee. It's working. It is actually working, yeah. So I can, I can <laughs> see the keyboard in here. Um, there's me interacting with it as well. Okay. So uh, we've got some great, great stuff. So that's, that's working nicely within that environment. I've now got Windows applications, not just on my, um, my Windows applications on my, on my desktop, but I've actually got Windows applications running on my iPad as well. And hey, guess what I've got working too? Look at this, Paul. Look what I'm doing with this. Does it begin with an X? It begins with an X. So <laughs> I've got the the X1 mouse. Okay, so you can see me actually interacting with with this document um, using the X1 mouse. Not doing very well <laughs> with the X1 mouse. See, I'm pasting some stuff in there. I can highlight the whole stuff. I know. I can change the font. All of that great stuff. Okay. So I've actually got an X1 mouse running within here. Cool, brilliant. So let's just uh, shut down, shut down that session. We we finished with that airplay now. Turn off the airplay and get back to the next part of the demonstration. Okay, did I just click there by accident? I think I did. I think I just clicked on it by accident. Don't do it. We don't want it back again. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Right. So that's how users get access. Really easy, right? Simple. No problem at all. So now you're probably wondering which bits of this 
whole solution are Citrix looking after for me and which parts do I have to manage myself in this environment? So, Paul, maybe if I go across this diagram, you can talk a little bit about which bits um, Citrix manages. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we might as well just start from the left-hand side there. So Citrix looks after the license server, the delivery controller, the database, director, studio, and, you know, depending on exactly how you want to do it, it could be, you know, the Netscaler gateway uh, and even that simple uh, storefront. Yeah, yeah. So, so all of that stuff is managed in our own Azure subscription. It's kept highly available for you. It's kept up all the time. Um, Netscaler could be could be here. We might be managing that for you. You might have your own Netscaler gateway service if you have, and you want that to be on premise for the reasons we talked about earlier. You know, smart card authentication, that kind of thing. That's fine. Um, we can also have a storefront internally. Now, one reason you might want to have a storefront here and and still integrate with Citrus Cloud is if you want to customize it in some way. So, anyway. Just to be clear, we can host all of it for you if you want. The only things that you are looking after yourselves are the VDAs, all right? So they're your responsibility to look after and keep up to date. Uh, we also look after the cloud connectors. So um, every three to four weeks, what we'll do is we'll upgrade those connectors for you automatically to the latest version of the connector software. Keeping them evergreen, yeah. Yeah, so keeping them evergreen, just like we're keeping the rest of the services in here evergreen for you. So if a new feature comes out for ZenApp and Zen Desktop, it goes into cloud first. We have cloud first organization. Okay, Those cloud connectors in there will get automatic updates for you. We don't upgrade them all at the same time. We only upgrade one at a time. Once that one's back online, we go to the next one. And I think, Lee, you know, you touched upon this very briefly earlier but that's exactly why you wouldn't want to put the cloud connector on like a domain controller mm, or an email yes. server or something like that you definitely need it on that separate server because going back to the point that we keep it evergreen it might get restarted to have the latest and greatest updates you know security uh, patches and so on and so forth so that's really key to remember yeah sure um just to just to verify as well you know obviously anything inside the firewall here you're managing yourself so your active directory you'll be looking after yourself all of, all of your apps and data at this particular point is all under your control. Now, um, when you buy a cloud subscription and subscribe to one of our services, you'll get automatic support from us, right? 24 by 7 every day of the year. Okay, You can get onto Citrix support either, either via the control plane, so via the, 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 the web browser, or you can actually phone up someone and get information from here as well. Um, we've got some additional tools that are available to be used. Um, within Citrix Cloud to help you to, to maintain your system. You've got things like Smart Check, the ability, mainly this is primarily for on-site um, ZenApp deployments. It'll actually give you some intelligence back on how your system's performing. If, it, if, the, if uh, we found any issues that are happening proactively in your system. Um, Smart Scale can move your infrastructure, um, create new VDAs or reduce the number of VDAs in use depending on your needs and your load. Smart Build gives you the ability to actually build infrastructure. So you can go in and use our Smart Build template and actually build out automatically a resource location with all the VDAs, the connectors, everything you need. Smart Build is a great piece of technology. It used to be a lifecycle manager, right? That's right. And we basically you know, take advantage of some really awesome blueprints that both Citrix put in there and our third third party vendors put it yeah, in there as well exactly. so you know Nutanix for example will have a smart build blueprint in there. yeah yeah and then we have uh, smart migrate uh, smart migrate is, is a cloud service but it's mainly concerned with moving from Zenap 6.5 to Zenap 7 okay on premise doesn't work yet with moving 6.5 up to the cloud okay but that's something for the future now availability wise you know we have some um, service level goals that we have published in there. Um, we, we aim to have 99.9% .9 uptime, okay, which is a similar kind of story for the service level goals that our main cloud providers also aim for. Um, if you want to look and, and see what the status is of the, the various services in Citrus Cloud, you can go to status.cloud.com. It'll give you a dashboard that looks very similar to this. So you'll see here all the various services that we have in Citrix Cloud. There's the ZenApp and Zen Desktop service. Whether they're, they're up, um, we've got planned maintenance. So we'll let you know in advance if we've got any maintenance. Um, some issues, if there's issues in there, or issues, should I say, um, they are also listed in there too. So go to status.cloud.com if you've got a problem uh, and see if any of the services are down. 
Now, another thing we do, one of the things I mentioned to you was that we're upgrading this system every three weeks, right? So we better put a pretty good system in place to upgrade all of your back-end infrastructure, right? And this is how we do it. We do it using something called the Canary upgrade process. So if you remember, in years gone by, miners down the mines used to use canaries, literally birds, in, um, in cages to see if there was any escaped gas or any noxious substances down in the mine. If the canary fell off their perch, they knew that the air was bad and they had to get out of the mine really quickly. I don't okay. think they'd get away with that today. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. <laughs> Health and safety wouldn't, wouldn't really go for that. But, you know, we use a, a similar process when we're, we're moving. So we've got two systems, for the sake of argument, system A and system B. Um, all of the, the calls to Citrix Cloud for, for, from all, all our users and all the management gets done to system B. Okay, so system B um, gets accessed all the time by you guys and by us doing these demos. What we then do is we take system A and we deploy all of the new cloud updates on system A. And then there's a five or, or yeah, around a week transition period. Well, we, what we do is we call it canary. So we canary over our users from system B to system A. First of all, we start with internal stakeholders. So these are Citrix specific accounts like the ones we've got here. Um, also, we've got um, some other first adopters that want to be the first adopters here. They get done first. If there's a problem, we'll stop at that point. Okay, so we stop at 10% if there's an issue. We don't move anyone else over until we fix that problem. But assuming everything works, we'll go later to 35, 70, whatever, until we get up to 100%. Everyone's now running on system A, and system B becomes our our backup system, but also our, our staging system for the next version of Citrus Cloud, which will be in, you know, three to four or two to three weeks' time, okay? So that's how we do it, using the Canary process. Now, I did mention that you were looking after the VDAs yourself, right, in this, but guess what? A lot of customers want to go a little bit further than just having the infrastructure managed by Citrix, don't they, Paul? Yeah, that's right. So um, what we've brought on board um, with something called the Citrix Managed Workload Service, it's specifically targeted at the ZenApp and Zen Desktop service. Um, so Lee's been talking about um, how you as the customer or you know, even as the partner will be using and taking advantage of uh, your on-premise or private or public cloud VDAs. Um, but you might not want to manage them. You, you might not want to do the Windows updates. You might not want to do the upgrades to the VDAs. Okay, so that's exactly what this service offering is doing. Okay, cool. So that's that. Now, let's talk a little bit about high availability. Now, high availability, if you're running a, um, an on-premise resource location, it's kind of your responsibility, right? You've got multiple racks. You've got multiple Zen servers or Hyper-V servers or whatever that are sitting there. Um, and you're looking after HA of those VDAs yourself. We're looking after the HA of the stuff in the cloud. So the stuff that we manage, we're actually looking after that reliability for you. But if you move to Azure or AWS or Google Cloud or wherever you're moving, then things start to change because not only are you, uh, you know, maybe responsible for looking after the stuff in, in your own data center, you need to change slightly the way you work um, to make sure that these cloud resources stay up and running. So, at the moment, you know, we've, we've really just been talking about internal on-premise infrastructure. Let's actually bring in a new concept here. So, let's bring in the concept of our stuff in the cloud. So, um, um, not only on-cloud control plane, but on-cloud resources um, and VDA. So, let's get a couple of VDAs. Let's pop them across there into, into Citrus Cloud, into, into any cloud, in fact. So, so we had a bunch of VDAs sitting across here. So um, we're going to need some VDAs in your Azure subscription or your AWS subscription, um, just the same way as we would do with VDAs over here. We're also going to need cloud connectors. So we would stick cloud connector VMs in our Azure subscription, just the same way as we would do um, if we were doing it on-premise. So this stuff would all be here. Now, what happens with this is um, in order to make sure that those cloud connectors are always up and uh, the VDAs that we need to work are always up, what we need to do is leverage one of the architectures for that specific cloud to do that. Um, in Azure, they're called availability sets. So if you set um, a bunch of VMs in the same availability set, 
what they'll say is, you know, they'll guarantee that they won't bring down all of the, the VMs in that availability set. So they will take those resources and put them on different hypervisors, for instance, to make sure at least one of those is up. So you would have your cloud connectors in an availability set to make sure that if, if Microsoft wanted to do some maintenance in, in their Azure cloud, both those cloud connectors wouldn't go down at the same time. The same for your NetScaler resources, the same for your AD, we'll talk about AD in a minute. And also the same for your virtual desktops, of course. We'll make sure that they're up and running all the time within there. That's Azure. AWS has a similar technology called an availability zone, where if you put machines in the same availability zone, they'll make sure that, again, they're not, um, not turned off and not maintained at the same time to give you some business continuity or to at least give you some high availability in there as well. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit about you know, greenfield infrastructure. So we've we've created um, some some resources for you. We've we've moved the control plane onto the cloud. Uh, we've got some resources internally that we can access for maybe security reasons or whatever. We've also started deploying some stuff in the cloud. But the reality is, a lot of the people on this call pool are are existing ZenApp and Zen Desktop users, right? Good. Okay. <laughs> We're very happy. Well, I'd like to think we <laughs> like to think you are anyway. So what you know? How can we how can we allow you to leverage some of the resources you have already in your organization and uh, you know move across to Citrix Cloud. Well, so the first thing is, you know, forget forget all of this for a minute. You've got maybe a Zen App and Zen Desktop system isolated in your environment. This could be a Zen App and Zen Desktop 6.5 environment. Um, it might be a 7x environment that's been there for a, a couple of years, whatever. And you've got a couple of VDAs sitting in there. In order to access it, you've probably got a storefront. And, you know, that storefront will enumerate applications from these VDAs um, and this delivery controller. So in standard Zap and Zen desktop stuff all running on site. What happens if you start bringing some of your VDAs under management from Citrus Cloud? How can you make your user, your user experience consistent across that transition? What you can do is you can take um, Citrus Cloud or take your storefront that's on-prem and that's just point it at the cloud connector. So in the same way as we can aggregate icons, desktops, application icons from two or three different um, Zen App and Zen desktop systems into the same storefront, if you just connect your storefront to your cloud connector, you'll actually see straight away that you can get resources from this system and from our now new cloud system. So if I click across to, to here, for instance, if I go into my internal storefront, so this is one I deployed earlier. Okay, logging with the, the same credentials. This, again, this is on-prem storefront. You'll see within here I've got some applications. So these applications are accessible to me. These applications, by the way, are actually ZenApp 6.5 applications. So I've got a 6.5 system running here, and I've pointed this storefront here, not at a 7 system, at a 6.5 system. So I've already started using storefront in my 6, ZenApp 6.5 environment to consolidate resources, and I've got access to some of those resources in here. If I now go to the storefront, though, so I'll go to my storefront server, manage delivery controllers, and add that cloud connector that I configured earlier. So I'm going to call this cloud. I'm going to go in here and add the cloud connector that I configured right at the start of this master class, connector.training.lab. They're not load balanced. I'm not using HTTPS in this particular case. Click OK. And now we've consolidated our applications from two different systems into the same internal storefront. Um, you'll notice it's an internal storefront um, because, you know, it's got some, it actually says on-premise storefront, right? I've changed the icon there. You can see it's got some customization on there. So if you do need, you know, a corporate brand, that kind of thing, right now, um, storefront is, uh, internal storefront is, is, is the right way to go. If I hit F5 there, what you'll see is not only do I have access to those existing, maybe legacy applications in this particular case from my 6.5 system, I've also got now access to this, these new on-premise resources controlled via Citrix Cloud. So that's the first stage to doing this. Keep the user's ex experience consistent and just give them access to more resources. Some of them managed via the cloud, some of them managed via your traditional method. Now, the next thing I can do within here is not only can I, I aggregate this stuff with Storefront, I can take this VDA out 
of the existing system and plug it straight in just by changing a few parameters to this system here and I can manage it just the same way as I would be this VDA that I already installed in the system. So if I go across to, to that particular server, um, if you look down here, look at which servers I'm talking about. As I mentioned, this was the Zenap 65 system. So there's a couple of servers here. Zenap 65C, which is our controller, um, and I've got my Zenap 65 worker VM in here. So if I go to that worker VM and install the VDA, it's a really simple task. So I can go to W2, there's the server there, I've just RDP'd into it, launch the VDA software just the same way as I did with um, when I installed the VDA from scratch, specify that I want to allow access to this system rather than create a full image from it, um, it's going to install the VDA by automatically, turn on and off some of these personalizations, give it my connector address, so connector.training.lab, test connection, okay, it's still up, um, click add, go, then next, open the ports, and the last thing it's going to say after I've gone through this whole process is, uh, by the way, you know that this is actually the Zenap 6.5 server that you're doing this on, are you sure that you want me to do this? And you'll, you'll click got it, I'm ready to continue, you'll click install, and it'll go away and install that VDA, so it'll uninstall that worker out of the um, Zenap 6.5 system and put it into the Zenap um, or the, the cloud system. In this case, I've already done that with a snapshot. So I've installed the VDA. If I revert to that snapshot, what that'll do is it'll just take it to the point where that VDA install <coughs> finished. Okay. So we've actually got that with the VDA installed now. I'll just start it up. And of course, what it'll do now is it'll launch up. The VDA will advertise itself to the, the, the connector VM, which is our you know, pseudo broker, if you like. And that guy will be available via Citrus Cloud. Now what I need to do, okay, let's just go in Citrus Cloud, okay, is um, go to my cloud console, so go to here, full configuration, and do the same as I did with my brand new catalog. So I'll create a new machine catalog in here. Okay, same options, it's a server OS, use another technology, I'm not going to do it with PVS or anything like that. Add VMs, again, the Cloud Connector will talk to the hypervisor, find those elements for me, I'm going to choose that worker there, this worker is in my Active Directory, choose its Active Directory that I want to find this in, um, let's have a look, find those objects in my AD, okay, W2, is the, is the one I want. Okay, um, again, it's an on-premise resource and it's running the latest version or 7.9 or above. So I'm going to call this guy um, Machine Catalog On-Prem Legacy. So these are some legacy applications that I need to run on here. Once we've done that, we'll go into Delivery Group and do the same as we did before. So I'm going to consume that machine catalog. I can either leave it um, to be managed by Citrus Cloud. In this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to allow um, access to specific users within here. So I can do it old styley if I really want to. Let's go ahead and uh, choose my domain users again from within here. Okay. Domain users. <clears throat> okay. Do, 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 do. That's pretty much it I need to do. Oh, add, add, let's add some applications, shall we? So if you remember, we had uh, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel um, hosted on that um, system, didn't we? So there's Excel that was running on a Zenap 65 server. Um, we've got uh, Okay, PowerPoint and, uh, and Word. So let's let's deploy those out using Citrix Cloud. Again, I've got to be a little bit um, funny about this. I'm going to call this legacy. So this is the legacy version of Excel. Now, 
don't worry, I, I, the, kind of, uh, the irony is that I'm actually using uh, not legacy apps, I'm actually using a new version of PowerPoint Excel, a new version of Office here. But that was the only CD I had, Paul. Okay, so I apologize for that. Uh, these might seem, these, these are taking the role of our legacy apps in this whole thing, even though they are Word and Excel PowerPoint 2016. If we have anyone from Microsoft on the call, <laughs> we do apologize. <laughs> okay, let's not, not give them a desktop on that server. We don't, don't care about that. Um, and we're going to call this guy, um, not machine catalog, it's delivery group, on-prem, legacy apps. So those, those apps that you just can't move to your new platform, but you really want to um, use with this new system, we can go ahead and create a delivery group for that. Okay, so now if I log into that cloud storefront, so if I click in here, I'm already logged in, and I do a quick refresh, not only now do I have the details of those older, those applications that I installed on that VDA, look what else I've got. Word, PowerPoint, and Excel deployed from a previously Zenapp 6.5 server down in Citrix Cloud, consolidating the same place, same resources. And Lee, speaking of um, uh, you know Zenapp Send Desktop 6.5, you know with end of life coming next year, mm. um, probably a really good point, you know, just to bring up that if you're on 6.5 or your customers or you know are on 6.5. You definitely need to be thinking about moving away because yeah. it's Mid end of middle life. of next year it's going to be end of life we extended it for another couple of years if you remember um mark templeton got up on stage in synergy i think it was 2015 or 2014 yeah and said we're going to hold it till 2018 in those days it seemed like forever yeah right? four years is a long time in the it industry it's coming up soon guys exactly so on that point uh, just for the audience i've popped a um a little link there to the citrix product life cycle Worth saving, uh, worth saving, I think, as yeah. a favourite, right? Yeah, definitely. Have that there. So if you're still on Zenapp 6.5, and we still have a lot of customers on Zenapp 6.5, now is the time to move. Oh dear, look, I haven't activated my copy of Office. You're going to do that later, though. Sorry, I'll be doing that later. Sorry, Mr. Microsoft, I haven't done that. Hello, world. Okay, I'm so original, aren't I? Right, so we've just deployed legacy applications from Citrix Cloud from anywhere using the NetScaler Gateway service to access them. Splendid. So... Let's have a look at where we're at. So a couple of things I want to talk about before we move on to the final bit of this masterclass is what about apps and what about directories and what about authentication? So, so far, as I mentioned, we've been talking about stuff that is on-prem, but we introduced this concept of having our VDAs out here in the cloud. So what happens if you've got all of your applications and data hosted out here? Um, in, in, your, in your private data center, how are these VDAs ever going to get access to those resources across here? Well, I'll be honest with you, one of the things that, that you know, can be something that delays um, cloud adoption is the networking aspects of this. Okay? So typically, whenever you're putting stuff out in the cloud, it needs to communicate back to your head office for something. Okay? What most people do is they'll put an express route in place. So they'll go... They go to Microsoft, they'll buy the express route service via um, Equinix, I think is the vendor. They get a fiber connector into their, into their head office and they manage a very, very low latency connection between Azure and their data center. They literally sit sub 10 seconds, uh, 10 milliseconds latency there. So very, very good. Um, a couple of ways of consuming that service. You can do it as an all you can eat, which is, costs a bit more, or you can do it on a data um, you know, level basis as well. Um, that is an option. A couple of other options as well, Paul, right? A couple of other options. I mean, if you're using Azure, there are just some very kind of basic built-in um, IPsec um, options that are available there. And, you know, it ultimately comes down to the amount, <coughs> excuse me, the amount of data, you know, that you're expecting to be uh, passing, you know, from destination A to destination mm. B. There's also things like SD-WAN. You can actually use SD-WAN as well if you want to. We have a product called SD-WAN? We have, yeah. <laughs> is it called SD-WAN now? Has it changed? No, it's Net scalar software unified, line, it's unified gateway. No, <laughs> it's still <laughs> called SD-WAN. <laughs> okay, so you can have SD-WAN um, on, your, on your site and, and in Azure, and uh, you can be up and running in no time at all. Um, but ExpressRoot is probably one of the, one of the, the, the main um, options that people use here. 
Um, now, you know, it sort of comes up, what are you going to do with your applications? Well, if your application is a standalone application, so Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that kind of thing, then they can go straight onto the VDAs, right? There's no back-end infrastructure associated with that, typically. Maybe a KMS server or something that's available across that express route. But typically, they tend to be standalone applications. You don't need to worry too much about those. Where you start having to worry is where you have things like multi-tiered applications. So, you know, you might have a, a web server application that, um, that is available and it needs to sit next to the database that it's communicating with. So, uh, you know, you, you typically need to look at, um, look at the latency across this link and, you know, maybe if your web server to database, to backend database link is, you know, needs to have something under 10 milliseconds or maybe under 20, then that could be okay. But it could be that your application is very, very picky and it doesn't, it doesn't support that, um, that level of latency. So you might want to, you know, leave that web server on site you might want to move both the web server and the database across for that application. It really depends on the application. Um, you could have applications that, that stay on site and you just have a, a VDA hosting those applications. If your applications are web-based, typically, you know, that's no problem. Web-based applications do work very well under higher latency. So you could have your web browser deployed in your VDA here and just access those either via the cloud if it's a software as a service type of application or back via um, another method through or maybe through your express route. Um, another thing to bear in mind is your data. So your user's data, where, how are you going to access that stuff? Well, think about this. You could, if you don't have an express route, you could have this data hosted by us up in the cloud. So this could be ShareFile, right? This could be a ShareFile service. We could host that data for you up in Citrus Cloud. Your user on their VDA could have a, um, um, the, the cloud connector, and they could be up and running very, very quickly. So if you look at, uh, look at this through here, we go to desktops, my on-prem desktop there. If I launch that desktop again, uh, what you'll see is that I installed into that VDA, I installed the um, connector for ShareFile. That connector for ShareFile is actually quite a, a magic thing, Paul, isn't it? Because it aggregates all of your file shares in one place. So yeah. we can get access to your drive mappings, your standard home directories. You can get access to shared data from within there on, on shared home directories. And given that we have, you know, given that we have Joel in the background who, come, who came from the ShareFile background, I know that he'll be absolutely gagging to get on and speak about this, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the drive mapper is a really cool piece of technology. So perhaps if you have users that work in a traditional way and they expect to have that maps drive as their H drive or whatever, then we can take advantage of um, using the share file technology and presenting your data in that way. Some users, like myself, I prefer, you know, sync, uh, you know, I prefer on-demand sync. Um, and I prefer to be able to choose what I sync. Um, so I use a different type of share file client, but we have lots of different options in that space. It just depends on how you want to work and how your business runs. Sure. So the drive mapper tool there is available. Um, it's not running right now, but typically when that does run, um, it'll appear as a separate drive mapping here. And all of that data is accessed through Citrix Cloud. Um, or if you've got an on-premise um, resource location, you could have the, um, the share file connector. Uh, installed there as well. It's uh, what's it called? It's called the Managed Story Zone. Um, Story Zone. Story Zone Controller. That's it. Yep. And then you can access all your internal resources in there as well. So that's a little bit about your apps. What about your AD? Well, how would you treat AD in a cloud environment? Well, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Um, you could maybe deploy something if you're if you're all AD or, or all cloud. You could stick. Azure AD domain services out here. And you could just authenticate to this, and this would be your AD as a service, okay? So that would be um, available, and uh, you know you wouldn't need to worry too much about Active Directory. But what if your AD is on site, and you're doing authentication to applications that are inside your firewall? Well, there's a couple of options there as well. Um, one, of the, one of the common ones is that people will take their Active Directory, and they'll just make this another site. So they'll make their Azure resource location, um, another site, just the same way as they would do their London office, their Paris office, New York, whatever. Um, and, you know, that works quite well, um, just the same way as it would do in, in a purely internal environment. Um, also, you can have 
different Active Directory domains and different forests. So um, some people have said to us what they want to do is keep a, a forest internally in their organization, um, have a, a brand new forest out in the cloud, and then create a trust between those two Active Directories to allow you to, to do authentication across and all that kind of nice stuff. Um, if you do have um, a multi-forest environment with trust, one of the things you need to just bear in mind is that um, cloud connectors don't understand those trusts yet. Okay, so there's a workaround for that. You have to take um, a set of cloud connectors and deploy them down on your, your site as well. Okay, so that's, that's something that, that you would have to do if you did have that. If you, you don't need to have that if you just treat this as another Active Directory site, though. So there's, there's basically three or four options and ways of you doing this. And some of these things you might have already done. So if you're already using Azure, you already have applications in Azure that are using this stuff, then you might need to, um, um, might already have this stuff sorted. But it's something that you need to think about if you want to move your VDAs and applications out to the cloud. So um, I just want to show you very quickly my, my resource location. So if you remember, um, within Citrix Cloud here, I had a resource location that was running in the cloud. Do you remember? Um, it was uh, configured earlier. Um, there's some resources here, uh, DG, Master Class Delivery Group Azure. So I've got some resources configured out there. Um, it's got its own zone associated with it in Studio as well. And uh, I've got some VDA. So if I go across to here, all my resources were actually created using Smart Tools. So I called the, um, the group that they were in, the resource group, Smart Tools. So there's my two connectors, Master Class Connector 1, Cloud Connector 1 and 2. There's my Active Directory. Because I've got no um, link between my on-premise data center and this Azure subscription, I can't do any sort of federation. I can't do any extending of directories. So I've just created an AD controller there just for test purposes. There's my two connections, and there's my VDA. So if I go across here, and I log in to that same storefront, but this time, instead of logging in as Lee Bushen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as someone in that other domain that is managed via the same system. So it's actually called the MC domain. That's the domain controller that you uh, you saw there. That's that domain controller there. If I log in there, same user ID, I'll get access to those resources. And these are resources from a completely different VDA now, one that you didn't see earlier. So there you go, Paint, GIMP, and Audacity. So there's some applications. Again, via the same Citrix Cloud, um, all being accessed. But as you can see from, from what, what I'm showing you here, uh, what we're showing you is basically this model. So we've got cloud connectors in here, we've got some VDA sitting in the data center, and we're actually accessing applications that are sitting on those, those VDAs. We've also logged in, if I log in as a user in this directory here, in this active directory, um, then I will get access to these VDAs within here. There you go, there's my, my virtual desktop. Um, oh, and it's actually launching Paint. Yeah, so it's launched the virtual desktop automatically, like it did before, and uh, we're also getting the Paint application directly out of Azure. So this is a fully cloud, fully native um, desktop service that you're you're seeing me access now. You're clearly wasted at Citrix with those Paint skills. Duh, <laughs> I am the man. <laughs> so. Now let's just let's just cover what we've we've talked about so far. Still to come is our competition. Okay, so we'll still be doing our competition. Still to come, we're going to talk to Alex Balkenqual and ask him some questions. You can ask him some questions as well. Um, please put them in the Q and A window at the time, and we will be searching through. If you put Alex in front of your question, we'll know specifically that's a question for Alex too. So far, though, what we've covered is what is Citrix Cloud. We talked about part one, where we talk about what Citrix Cloud is as a general concept, some of the services that run in that. We've also talked about what the Zen App and Zen Desktop services. We've talked about where your servers are located, what bits you know we put in the cloud, and what parts stay on site. We then talked a little bit about who's using this stuff, and we dealt with some of the issues or some of the questions we have around security of the system. We talked about once we built the system, how do our users get access to this, whether they're internal users or users working at home or in a web cafe or an iPad. We showed you some iPad demos. What parts of, of, of the infrastructure does Citrix look after for me? And what do we do about availability, both on premise and when we're talking about moving our infrastructure, our own managed infrastructure into a cloud? 
What about existing services? We took a Zenapp 6.5 server, we consolidated that into the same storefront as our new cloud resources and gave our users a single pane of glass to get all of their applications from. We then took that Zenapp 6.5 server that was running Windows 2008 R2 and actually moved that across with a VDA 715 through into Citrix Cloud. Um, we talked about cloud-based resource locations. Where do we put our apps? What are some of the considerations there? Same for AD. And, you know, hopefully in a, in a minute we'll talk to Alex and find out where you can go for more information. Where do you go from here if you're looking at this stuff and thinking, this is great, I really want a bit of it. I really want to start dipping my toe in the water. So we'll be talking about that in a second. Before we go across to Alex, though, I just want to point out we do have some other services that are similar to the Zen App and Zen Desktop service in Citrix Cloud. And these have come out literally in the last six months, and they are like light versions of the main service. Okay? There are two services. There's the Zen App service, Essentials, and there's the Zen Desktop service, Zen Desktop Essentials. Okay? Difference between the two is this. So Zen Desktop Essentials is all about deploying desktops. So Windows desktop specifically, and specifically Windows 10 CBB desktops. All of the Zen Desktop Essentials system is available via the Amazon or the AWS um, marketplace. No, it's the AWS marketplace, isn't it? No, Lee, I've got to jump in there. Yeah, no, Azure it's, only. Azure, what's, what's it called? Azure marketplace. Azure marketplace. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, Sorry, I just got my terms confused. There's all these marketplaces these days. That's the problem. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? So it's all done by, yeah, Harsh is, Harsh is on the background going, yeah. why is that bloke talking Do about? Do not unmute Harsh, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Harsh. So all of it is in is, is consumed as an Azure subscription. So this is a bring your own Azure subscription, okay? So you, you subscribe to the service from the, the Azure marketplace. You bring your own subscription to the to the to the party and you deploy your virtual desktops in there. Okay, those virtual desktops can be Windows 10 only for this server and they have to be the current branch for business version. This service has been in tech preview for a few months now. I think very, very soon, in fact, maybe even this week, because I know that Microsoft Ignite is, is on, they may announce that now this service is, is ready for production. We don't know that, by the way, just you know, speculating this is a big event that they're running at the moment. So um, look out for that. That's Zen Desktop Essentials. Zen App Essentials is something different. This is all concerned with apps, delivery of apps, not desktops, just apps. Okay. This is the natural replacement for a uh, Azure Remote App, ARA. Okay. The service that Microsoft have had for some time, um, last year they announced they were going to end of life it. That actually happened at the end of August. So the natural successor to that is is. Zen Apps Essential. So you get all of the great functionality and user experience of Zen App and Zen Desktop, all for application delivery from um, Azure. And more, basically, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things you get with this, we'll, we'll, we've got a slide in a minute that goes through some of that. So there's the main Zen App and Zen Desktop um, service that we've been talking about today so far, okay? Um, there's the price per user per month. It's done on a, on a yearly basis, right? So it's a yearly subscription yep. okay, rather than a monthly subscription. Um, you can publish apps with that like we just did. You can publish desktops like we just did. The management console is a fully featured version of Studio that you saw me configure that stuff in. Um, secure access, you know, you can add on as an additional layer the next scalar gateway service to give you secure access in there. Um, we've got all of the stuff like smart scale, all of those, those tools that we had that we talked about briefly. Um, yeah, so it's Azure, it's hybrid, it's on-premise. It actually can be anywhere. So we can have these resources running in, um, in you know, AWS or Rackspace, Google, Rackspace, wherever. on-premise, wherever. Okay. Yearly subscription, as I said, sold through the Citrix channel. So Citrix channel partners will, will help you with that. And, of course, you get support with that. The Zen Desktop service, as I mentioned, no application access, okay? Literally, Windows 10 um, CBB enterprises only. So this could be relevant to big customers or small customers, right? Anyone that wants to deploy Windows 10 out into the cloud. You get Studio, albeit a cut-down version of Studio that doesn't allow you to manage applications, literally just desktops. Um, NetScale Gateway, we don't include that service yet with the Zen Desktop. Um, we can talk to Harsh more about that um, in the future. Full capabilities of smart scale. Um, it's Azure only, as we said. You, go via, you buy it via the Azure marketplace. 
monthly subscription though so it's not yearly it's actually done on a monthly basis so if you're looking at you know maybe consuming this for a certain period of time or, or for small periods of time then we can do that as well okay Zen app essential service it's pretty much the same in terms of the way it's delivered but instead of it being to do with apps uh, to do with desktops rather it's to do with apps so apps only one of the things we have done um, is we simplified the whole user experience for Zen App Essentials. Okay, so you've got a very simple web UI to access it. And that's what you're going to show us. Yeah, there, in right? fact, I am. So if I go across to my Citrix Cloud here, and uh, this time I'm going to change customer. So I'm going to go to a different customer that doesn't have the full Zen App and Zen Desktop service. They actually have Zen App Essentials associated with them. So we'll go in here. Um, it's actually still called the Zen App and Zen Desktop service, but, you know, it's actually <laughs> Zen App Essentials, but don't worry too much about that. When you click on it, it actually shows you... We'll find someone to get that renamed, right? But it's Citrix Zen App Essentials that you've got here, okay? So um, it looks very similar to some of the stuff you've seen already. There are a few um, steps you need to go through to get this up and running. You need to prepare and link your Azure subscription. So as I said, this is bring your own Azure subscription to the party. Right. So you need to link that. You then need to get your images uploaded and then you need to create the resources a little bit like I did in Studio. So if you go into manage and Azure subscriptions, you'll see in here that I've already linked this to my EMEA readiness Azure subscription. If I click on add subscription there, it will take me to an authentication. I'd log into Azure and, you know, using my user ID and password, and it would link my subscription. I think there's a question in there asking you whether you want to allow API access so that Citrix can actually create VMs on your behalf. Yeah. Apart from that, though, that's all done and dusted. Then you go in and you manage your, um, your images. So these are your VDAs that are going to be up in Azure. I've got my own image here that I prepared. If I want to add a master image, I just go down here. I choose my subscription. In this case, I've got... This is the only one. I go to the um, resource group, which is where I know that I uploaded that base image to. Storage accounts. I'll, I'll know this information, obviously. And in here, I specify the VHD I want to use for this image. So you can see here, Windows 2012 base VDA. This is one that I imported earlier. I'll choose that one. I'll give it a nice name here and hit save. I've already done that. There it is, Masterclass Windows 2000. 12 R1, uh, version 1 or number 1 okay you've got some Citrix prepared image in there as well if you want to just get up and running really quickly we've just put a, a quick test image for you typically though you'd be using your own VDA images here so what we're talking about um, now are these guys down in the cloud that you're going to be provisioning your VDAs okay last thing you do is go into catalogs and uh, you list your applications that you have on those VDAs and you associate your users to them. So I've got two here. Here's my masterclass catalog. I've published a number of apps in there. So if you look in here, I've got um, some apps published within here. Okay. And I've got a storefront. So I've got a storefront that I'm accessing. Um, this, this is the link that the users go to to get that application. If I click on apps, it gives me a list of apps within this catalog. Okay, calculator, Zenapp Enterprise, Firefox, Notepad. Um, if I go to subscribers, this is where I define who within my Active Directory have access to it. Okay, in this case, just Lee Bushen. Capacity. Now, this is an interesting one because what this is, it's got some auto scaling in here, right? So I can say that I want a certain type of resource, a certain instance type within Azure. I can say I want a minimum of one running all the time, just for you know, so users can connect. I can put a maximum of, say, 10, 15, and when it reaches a certain threshold, it'll actually spin up automatic infrastructure for us. So, by the way, all of this infrastructure that gets spun up in the data center, it, sorry, in my Azure subscription, is done uh, by Citrix Cloud, okay, apart from my AD, which I deployed myself. So, if I go into, into Azure, um, just look, find those virtual machines. They're actually in creates a resource group here for my two catalogs. It's also resource group one, I think. Here's my infrastructure for Zen App Essentials. So I've got two edge servers. They're my two um, Citrus Cloud connectors. And um, for each of those two catalogs, you see in here, my maximum is two and my minimum is one. So you look at the virtual machines here. 
Um, each of those has got one running because I've said I want a minimum of one. And uh, there's my, my standby one. I, if I put an, a, a maximum of five, then it would provision some more for me automatically. There's my Active Directory. Okay, so once that's all done, um, very, very simple. That's, uh, that's all done. I've got a master class. All I do is log in to that URL, so the URL that we gave in this catalog. So if I go across to uh, the Zap Essentials, it's a slightly different URL. Logging here. Again, this is a, a completely separate system here. So I'm just going to log in here with Masterclass, which is the name of the domain on this system. And log in. And the applications that I deployed via Citrix Cloud, via these catalogs, will now appear um, as if by magic in that portal. So, um, you know, Chrome was one of the ones that I deployed from my master image that I uploaded there. If I now come in here and click on Chrome, this is going to go on and launch Chrome for me. So Paul, Paul's uh, going to have to leave again um, just for a second, aren't you, Paul? He's, he's got a frog in his throat. He's had a frog in his throat for the entirety of this masterclass. He, he keeps on disappearing outside, unfortunately. I just get too excited. <laughs> you, you just get too excited, don't you? <laughs> so there you go. There is a, uh, a cloud-hosted um, desktop, or sort of rather application. Um, in this case, it's, it's uh, Chrome, and uh, it's, it's in my Azure subscription. Okay. Right, that was a Zen App Essentials demonstration. So guys, um, you know, we talked a little bit about the overall solution. We've talked about some of those other essential services there. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, just for the remainder of this masterclass, I want to go through to someone who's a real expert on this technology. And uh, we have uh, lucky today to have Alex Balkenquall with us. Um, so Alex, are you, are you there? I am indeed. Great, great. Thanks, thanks for being with us today. And uh, Alex, you're looking great there. What that uniform there? That looks like something out of Stargate Atlantis. Or... Is that is that corporate, Alex? That's not corporate, is it? That 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 that's our office in Redmond. You see there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is an impressive building. Uh, yeah, I can see. I can see there. And I know we did this on the last master. In case you're wondering um, why Alex is on the um, is it the Dauntless or I think it, it was it was the, the main ship in Stargate Atlantis that used to hop from um, galaxy to galaxy with. And he's actually there, aren't you, Alex, um, on the set of uh, of that of that TV program? Yes, I, yeah, I was. It was uh, it was pretty fun, I have to say. I've, I've seen the photos, I know, it looks absolutely amazing. Anyway, um, onwards and upwards. Um, one of the, the things I, I, I think I we really want to ask you first, and by the way, guys, if, if any of you guys on the webinar want to ask Alex some questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A, and we'll transfer them across to Alex for you. We'll ask those on, on your behalf. Um, but, you know, say you, you're interested in this masterclass, you like what you see, and you want to go and you want to subscribe to the Zen App and Zen Desktop service. How, what can we do to, to smooth our customers' way now, Alex, into, into getting that service up and running quickly? So, yeah, I, I think if you're looking at uh, uh, trials, uh, there's... That the important part is is that the customer has onboarded to Citrix Cloud, and once they've onboarded, they request the trial. Once that trial is requested, it 24 hours later, it'll appear against their org ID in Salesforce. Um, there, uh, anybody can uh, approve the trial within the, the the trial criteria that we have. So that that's the fastest and easiest way with a, a trial. But we also have great things for customers who want to purchase, such as the the starter pack. Um, this is a, a low-cost option that makes it very easy to get the customer to get them in the game with the services and provide something that's probably ideal for sort of longer, longer POCs. Okay, um, cool. Thanks, thanks for that, Alex. So, uh, yeah, we've actually got a slide right at the end here on what, what people can do to get started really quickly as well. Um, now, um, one of the things that our customers do say to us about deploying with, with Citrix Cloud as a control plane, but also going to cloud generally, is, Cal, you know, this stuff seems to cost so much. You know, I can do all this stuff on-prem, and it just seems to be cheaper. Um, I'm not used to this cloud model. I and mean, what can you, what would you say to those people? What, what are they actually getting for their money 
Uh, what additional benefits are they getting here for this uh, this extra premium, perceived premium that uh, they're, they're paying? Yes, sir, I, I think there's a, a few things that they're getting. You know, one, one of the items is um, obviously we're running the infrastructure and all of the new features uh, that we uh, develop as Citrix come to Citrix Cloud faster. So for those customers that are interested in being always up to date on features, Citrix Cloud provides the, the fastest way to do that uh, with all of the services that we, we have. We're also uh, keeping all of our services uh, up to date all the time. And this doesn't sound like a big deal, but you only have to look around the industry and see all the breaches that happen because people don't patch um, every week or heck, you don't patch every day for critical vulnerabilities. Um, you know, we're ensuring that we patch these things immediately, that we keep the service up and running, that we design for high availability. And, and can customers do that themselves? You, you betcha they can. Uh, but the advantage of, of Citrix Cloud is we just take that headache away. And for many of our customers, that, that's extremely valuable as it frees up IT resources to go and uh, focus on other higher value items in their organization. So it's not just about the, the direct cost of running the control plane and the, the savings that come there. It's about that opportunity cost of what else can IT be, be going and, and doing that may be of higher value to the organization. And I think the, the really interesting part is the cloud scale economics that get enabled once you start using our, our cloud services and that ability to leverage clouds like Azure and, and Amazon and you know, use the economics of scale that they've got for the VDAs. And as the customer scales up, the advantage is that you know, over time, Azure and Amazon gets cheaper, or you get better capabilities for the same price. And that, that's month in, month out. It's very different from buying um, some virtualization infrastructure for on-premises, where the, you spend the money on day one, and um, what that hardware can do on day one is, is, is what that hardware can do on day thousand. So, you know, your hardware doesn't get better over time, yet in the cloud it does. And I, I think that's what's, what's really interesting to those customers that are, are at the forefront of, of leading that move to cloud. Yeah, sure. And I suppose as well, if you're using infrastructure for maybe three months of the year, say you're the retail industry and you're, you know, you're, around Christmas time is when, when all of the, your, your, your systems are fully active and you have seasonal workers that kind of thing you know you don't you don't need to have the hardware just sitting there for the other nine months of the year right it's it's all available in the cloud and you can burst out into it as and when you need um, you could put maybe a subset of your users say you work with a lot of partners uh, in, with your organization you could have all of your partners just provisioned out in the cloud rather than on-premise so I guess there's, there's loads of different uh, advantages <laughs> There's another good example one there. For me, this was kind of the epiphany uh, um, for me was uh, I was talking to actually a service provider who's invested in their data centers, and we were talking about Citrix Cloud and, you know, would they use Azure or Amazon? And I was sure they were going to say no, and they were, they, they, they were clear. Absolutely when it makes sense. And a, a good example would be uh, um, a telco or another organization that maybe is highly invested in North America for data centers or in highly invested in the EU for data centers but suddenly wants to spin up a branch office in Hong Kong or somewhere like that. The advantage of Citrix Cloud is that you, you can do that literally within a week um, without having to worry about buying hardware, how you're going to get it shipped, finding data center space. So that kind of time to value um, is, 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 is great across all of the services, whether that's sure. files, Zen, app, Zen desktop. Sure, sure. So, um, so yeah, and another thing, of course, is you can think about expanding infrastructure out, but um, a lot of customers are wanting to make that move, but they, they've got existing investments on site and they have license mechanisms that they've built bought from Citrix in the past. I know we have some hybrid rights type of um, deals or, or licensing mechanisms that allow people to to move at their own pace across to Citrus Cloud. Maybe you could you could talk about hybrid rights a little. Yeah. So for those uh, existing customers that are, are good customers and have maintained their software maintenance or, or um, subscription advantage or are on uh, the new Select offerings, for anybody who's interested in transitioning. Um, 
we have a, a promotion going, uh, both a trade-up promotion and a transition promotion um, that makes it easier to purchase uh, the subscription um, and, and kind of gives them a, a, a path to make that cost effective to, to transition. But what it also does is it provides what we call uh, hybrid rights, maybe the wrong name. Essentially, for the same cost, for the single price, we give them both access to Citrix Cloud and, and the services plus the equivalent traditional installable software, what we sometimes call on-premises software. And what this allows them to do is migrate their users from the infrastructure that they've already stood up uh, to the new cloud-based, cloud-managed infrastructure without having to buy two licenses. With, without this offer, uh, a customer would end up paying twice, and we, we, we felt that that wasn't, wasn't uh, a, a good deal. So this is designed to, to help them uh, move, and we give them those hybrid rights for two years. So it allows them to move at their pace, move either workloads or, or users to cloud-managed as they see fit. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, we've actually had a question coming here from uh, Thomas Thomas B. And uh, one of the things about masterclasses is we tend to find that between 25 to about 45%, depending on the masterclass, are partners. They're Citrix CSA partners, right? And, you know, I know what these partners are like. You know, they're, they're like, you're eating our lunch, right? You know, you're making things too easy. What would, what would you say, you know, what are the advantages of Citrix Cloud from a partner's perspective? Well, from a partner's perspective, it, it's, I, I think, that time to solution that, that, that is the first, which is it's, uh, um, you can get the, the customer going, going far faster, and I think that's valuable in a compete solution. Moreover, the, the thing about Citrix Cloud is it, it, it is a continuous service, and it's about delivering Citrix as a continuous service. So we do have a, a lot of partners today that um, are just doing installation businesses. So go in, and drop in, and do an, an install, but, you know, to, to be brutally honest, install businesses, uh, I, I think uh, it's it's low value to the customer, and I, I think you know it's, it's it's easy for your competitors to compete there. The advantage of Citrix Cloud is all the other services that you can sell around, so uh, on a continuous basis beyond just that initial install. Whether that's cloud portfolio management, so you know helping the customer select the cloud. You know, are they going to use Azure? Are they going to use Amazon? Are they going to do do both? Then there's the the not just the, the first configuration of those clouds, but as those clouds change, helping make sure that the customer can take advantage of those. And as you think about people joining their on-premises infrastructure and the cloud together, there's a whole set of new security services and practices the partners should should develop and, and can offer there to really add value to, to the partner. So it's really about shifting the, the partner business from a transactional installation business to an ongoing uh, deeper and broader services. And, you know, ultimately our, our, our belief is that that will help our partners make a heck of a lot of more money. And, and what you'll find is that sales way easier in a subscription world to sell those services along, alongside on a continuous basis. Okay. Okay. So we we got one uh, one final question coming in here, and it, it's more of a sort of competitive question, really. Um, um, you know, Citrix isn't the only vendor out there providing desktops in the cloud, right? How do we how do we compare to some of the other vendors out there that that are offering desktop services in the cloud? Well, I think what we're doing is a little bit different than offering desktop services in the cloud. Um, you know, we, we see folks like, you know, Amazon Workspaces is a good example where it's a desktop in the cloud. But, you know, it kind of, the, the issue is it assumes the customer, A, is going to move everything to Amazon, kind of forgets that the customer already has all of these investments in Active Directory, on-premises applications, on-premises databases, um, and they, they don't really have that notion of, of, of being able to use the cloud to both deploy into the cloud, to deploy on premises and, and join those up. And uh, I, I think, you know, you, you see some of our competitors scrabbling to try and come up with the same value prop uh, and come up with the same capabilities, but I, I just don't believe they're there yet with, with those capabilities. We're the only uh, uh, vendor that allows the customer to choose 
and combine multiple clouds, multiple on-premises, and, and manage it all as a singular whole. And I think that that's unique because it's about meeting the customer where they are in their cloud transformation. It isn't about saying, hey, you've got to move everything to the cloud tomorrow. And I think that's, that's the biggest strength we have, along with all of the traditional investments we have in HDX, uh, um, provisioning and all of the, the other elements of our management. So, you know, that, that's too, still superior as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. So, Alex, um, we've just had a, a little look at the questions pane. There's no more questions for you coming in. Um, so thank you very much for, for your time today. And thanks for being in the background answering questions and answers as well. We've actually managed to get to the competition part of this now, Alex. We didn't manage it last time, did we? We got cut off at this point. <laughs> Uh, yes. So uh, is, is there any final thoughts you have before we uh, we move across to the competition and, and close the webinar down? No, I think that the biggest thing for me is, you know, both from the internal folks we have on the call and, and the partners is keep the feedback back uh, um, um, coming. You know, we're still creating new services, new business models, introducing new capabilities, and, and we need your help to understand, you know, w what things we should prioritize and what's important to be successful. So please keep that feedback coming. Brilliant. Okay. Alex, once again, thanks very much for your time. I put together, just before we finish, some follow-up reading for you. So Paul's been diligently putting lots of URLs in the, in the um, chat pane during this webinar. What we're going to do, though, is we've just rolled some of those up onto, the, uh, onto a single slide. Okay. So there's uh, some information about our cloud adoption services. There's a bit about uh, cost calculating if you're thinking of going to Azure. Um, we've got a feature comparison of the on-prem versions versus the cloud region. So if you're on Zen app, you know, 7.14 or something, you want to know what you can do if you go to Citrus Cloud, that's there as well. Uh, there's a blog on Active Directory um, services, Azure AD services in there as well from a directory perspective. There's some announcements about our EMEA control plane, which is coming out soon. Um, also, there's some great information here in some of these other documents, like the economic benefits of cloud. There's a, there's a good link in there for you. Um, there's a, a TCO guide for Zenap Essentials. I think probably Harsh wrote that, didn't he? One of our, our top guys. And uh, that's just been made available. There's a scalability guide. That talks to you about how you size your connectors and um, all the various capacities that we've tested with Citrix Cloud. It's a great document. Um, there's a how-to video series as well. So if you take this masterclass and you want to go a little bit deeper, Paul Hayward here has uh, has done a series of, of how-to videos on the Zenapp and Zen desktop service. So they're available through there. So check out all of those links, and uh, hopefully we can uh, we can assist you further. Um, there's also requesting access to Citrus Cloud. The, this is where you go if you want to sign up for a new um, a new Zenapp and Zen desktop trial service. Um, you do really need to talk to your Citrix rep, though, internally, and that's the best practice if you want to have this happen sooner rather than later. Get Talk to your Citrix rep. They will deal with the right departments internally. They'll log the inquiry within our Salesforce system. They'll authorize that trial, and you'll get up and running really, really quickly. So definitely recommend that you guys do that. Now, you've been asking loads of questions today. Thank you for all of your questions today, guys. Um, Mike, it's brilliant having you on, as usual, helping out in the background. Alex, thank you very much for your time today and for letting me interview you a little while ago. Um, but also to some of our other guys. You notice most of these guys on here are directors. We're not directors. Alex is a director. Joel's now a director. Um, thanks very much, Joel. Uh, we've also got Harsh Gupta. He, he, he said to me before the webinar, he said, you can use whatever picture you like of me, but just make sure you've got the director title. Use whatever picture, but that one. <laughs> Don't <laughs> well, use that one. Well, you know, he's a director now. I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to... <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I think we're in the wrong department, aren't we, with readiness? Yeah. We need to, if we want to be a director, we're going to have to move to the cloud team. <laughs> but, guys, thank you very much for answering all those questions in the background. And, uh, and of course, you know, the biggest thank you goes out to everyone that's been on this webinar today. Thank you very, very much for your time. Hopefully, you've enjoyed what you've seen. We've tried to keep the, the demos interactive, lots of very demo-rich. Tried to do a bit of whiteboarding as well to actually show you things rather than just be one slide after the next. So hopefully you've you've liked the format. And uh, yeah, you know, you'll be getting a recording for this afterwards. We'll be putting this up on YouTube. I'll probably stick it up on there tomorrow. Um, so it'll be available if you just do a search on Desktop Masterclass or Cloud Masterclass. It'll be right there. You'll also get a follow-up email, though, which will give you that link directly and access to the slide deck from today as well and the materials 
that we've uh, we've been or the links that we've been providing. Okay, so thank you very much for your time today, Paul. Any final words before we close the mask mask down? Other than just to thank everybody for staying on and listening and putting up with Lee and I and our terrible jokes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so no, thank you all very much. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, we'll be back soon. We're actually planning another masterclass. Not on Citrus Cloud. It's about upgrading, um, and so the next masterclass I'm planning to do, probably be doing it with Patrick, is going to be probably around the November time frame. And because we're getting near to this end of life of Zenap 6.5, I want to do a really um, feature-rich demonstration of how you can move resources up, not just to Citrus Cloud, but how you can upgrade internally. Um, to the latest versions in App and Zen Desktop. So look, of, look for that around the November timeframe. If you go down to the bottom of Citrix.com, there's an events um, and uh, webinar series down there, and uh, it'll be listed on there as usual. And as an early Christmas present, Lee, I'm looking to also do a Citrix Cloud Masterclass in December okay. as well. Okay, brilliant. So brilliant. Um, you're all welcome to come to that as well as you would expect, hoping to break out Citrix Cloud and get some of our partners involved. So maybe looking to run that with Nutanix as well, okay, for those of you that are interested. Wow, cool. Okay. All right, guys, once more, thank you very much, and catch you next time. Goodbye.